Hello, welcome to 13.3, Frequency Distributions and Statistical Graphs. So frequency distribution, a piece of data is a single response to an experiment. It could be uh, someone's response from a, a poll, it could be how well uh, a certain item held up to maybe being you know, smashed, being hit by a bat, or like uh, talking about a window or something. Uh, that's a piece of data. Frequency distribution is a listing of the observed values and the corresponding frequency of occurrence of each value. Okay, so the number of pets per family is recorded for 30 families surveyed. Construct a frequency distribution of the following data. Okay, so you have people with zero pets, probably the smart people. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll have number of pets and the frequency. People have zero pets, one pet, two pets, three pets, and four pets. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six people have zero pets and they save a lot of money that way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten people have one pet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight people have two pets. One, two, three, four. Four people have three pets, and two people have four pets. I, unfortunately, would fall in the five pet category at this time. Okay, I'm going to move on, so feel free to pause that if you need to. Rules for data group by classes. The classes should be of the same width. And when we say classes, we're talking about groups of data. So if you're going to do a group of data, like from 1 to 2, then 2 to, oh, sorry, 1 to 2, 3 to 4, 5 to 6, they're all the same width, or from 0 to 5, 6 to 10, and so on. So they should be the same width. Classes should not overlap, so you wouldn't go 0 to 5, then 5 to 6, because they both, 5 would fall into both categories. So we need to be careful of that. Each piece of data should belong to only one class. So module, uh, model class, modal, excuse me, modal class, the class of the greatest frequency. Midpoint of a class, also called the class mark, is found by adding the lower and the upper class limits and dividing the sum by two. Note the difference between successive class marks is the class width. Okay, example two, fo the following set of data represents the distance in miles that 15 randomly selected second grade students live from school. Construct a frequency distribution with the first class being 0 to 2. So we have distance. And then we have frequency. So we have 0 to 2 miles, then it must be 2.1 to four miles. Because you wouldn't just say three to four or three to five because you're missing the people who are more than two miles. Then 4.1, and I go one decimal place because this data only goes to one decimal place. 4.1 to six miles, 6.1 to eight miles, and 8.1 to 10 miles. So frequency. How many people are zero to two? Let's see, we have, here's one. Two, three, four, and five. So five students are between zero and two miles away from school. How many students are 2.1 to four miles away? Here's one. So it looks like there's one student. How about 4.1 to six miles away? Okay. Here's this is 4.1 to six. 4.1 to six. 4.1 to 6 and 4.1 to 6. Looks like we have four people in that category. How about 6.1 to 8? There we go. Looks like two people in that category. And 8.1 to 10. People who are left, and that is going to be three. Three students in that category. Okay, I'm going 
going to go ahead and scroll this up, so feel free to pause that if you need to. Okay, histogram. Histogram is a graph with observed values on its horizontal scale, so observed values down here, and frequencies on its vertical scale. A bar is constructed above each observed value or class, when classes are used, indicating the frequency of that value or class. The horizontal scale need not start at zero, and the calibration of the horizontal scale and vertical scales do not need to be the same. So if you go like zero to five, six to ten, and so on on the horizontal scale, a vertical scale can still go one, two, three, four, five. Frequency polygon. A frequency polygon is a line graph with observed values on its horizontal scale and frequencies on the vertical scale, so you put dots. To construct a frequency polygon, place a dot at the corresponding frequency above each of the observed values, then connect the dots with the straight line marks, one at the lower end and the upper end of the horizontal scale, so go up, do whatever, and go back down. These are not used very often. Frequency polygons, honestly I've seen them in this book, uh, maybe a couple others, but really we relate to histograms a little more. In example 3 it says to construct a histogram at a frequency polygon of the frequency distribution. Okay, so a number of pets. Do we have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4? We're going up to 10, so we'll scale this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So zero pets. There are six people with zero pets. So it's going to go up to six over and down. For one pet, there were ten people, so it's going to go up to ten across and down. For two pets, there were eight people, so it's going to go here at 8, over and down. For 3 pets, there are 4 people. And for 4 pets, there were 2 people. Now frequency polygon You could have zero be right here, but I'll do it there. Two, three, and four. Okay, for zero pets, we're at six. For one pet, we're at ten. For two pets, we're at eight. For three pets, we're at four. And for four pets, we're at two. So it starts here, goes up to that, there, 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 and then back down again. So there's a frequency polygon. Okay, feel free to pause that. I'm going to go on. Next one is a stem and leaf display. Stem and leaf display is a tool that organizes and uh, groups the data while allowing us to see the actual values that make up the data or data. The left group of digits is called the stem and the right group is the leaf. So the table, show, the table below indicates the number of miles 20 workers have, dr have to drive to work, construct a stem and leaf display. So what we're going to do with this, we're going to have the tens column and the ones. And this is how it works. We have people who are less than 10 miles, so zero there, then 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, and 40 to 50. Now, so someone between 
Let's put zeros in front of these and make them all two digits. So we have 03, 08, 03, 08, 04, and 09. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 data points. It means there are 5 people in that column or row. For the next one, we have 1, 2, 1, 8, 1, 2 again, 1, 5, 1, 7, 1, 6, 1, 2, and then 1, 4, 12, 14. Okay. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 people there. Now let's look in the 20 mile range. 2, 5, 2, 1, 2, 7, 2, 1, 2, 6. Now let's look in the 30 mile range. 35, so 3, 5. And then how about the 40 mile range? 4, 3. So there's our stem and leaf display. Now I want to point out sometimes these might be, you could order these from small to large. That's fine. I've seen that in some cases. Or you can have them in the order they occurred in the data chart. Okay, feel free to pause that and go on to the next page. Circle graphs. So circle graphs, also known as pie charts, and if you use Microsoft Excel, for example, they make pie charts really, really well. Are often used to compare parts of one or more components of the whole to the whole. So parts of the whole to the whole. According to a recent hospital survey of 200 patients, the following table indicates how often hospitals used four different kinds of painkillers. Use the information to construct a circle graph or pie chart illustrating the percent each painkiller was used. So in the first case we have 56 out of 200 and that's going to be 28 percent. Maybe I should do this times 100 is 28 percent. 104 over 200 times 100 is 52 percent. 16 over 200 times 100 percent. That's going to be 8 percent. And 24 over 200 times 100 percent is going to be 12 percent. Let's see, does that add up? 28 and 52 is 80. 80 plus 8 is 88 plus 12 is 100 percent. Okay. So, give this circle, free-handed circle. Let's go with the biggest one, 52%. That's a little more than half, so come along here, go a little bit that way. Here's our 52% and that was ibuprofen. Next one is 28%. That's a little more than a quarter, so a quarter be 25%, so we're going to be a, come up like this. 20% was aspirin. Then we have 12% uh, and 8%. Uh, so what's left of this? Don't worry about that. 12%. 12% was other. And the other 8% was acetaminophen. Of course, the smallest one's going to be the biggest name. Right, P P H E N. Okay, so there's our circle graph. Okay. And that'll do it for 13.3 frequency distributions and statistical graphs. So send me your questions and I'll see you guys online. Thank you.